How's it going, guys? Matt here with Carolina Coops. Welcome to Video Chicken. Uh, to my left is my host, Kristen Warren. I think this one really could be a male. Oh, we got one that's hatching? This show is for you guys. This is the bass fiber. Y'all know chickens are the gateway drug into homesteading. We survived with only one trip to the ER. Coyotes are everywhere. It's about time you show up, Matt. Uh -huh. Is a great straw. It is time finally for chicken police. They defecate every 12 seconds. Is that true? <laughs> now it is officially noon because the buzzer went off. <laughs> well, I've never counted. <laughs> Long more road. Coops. That's a good one with the with the courts and everything. And more chickens. You're, well, the math you do now, Daddy, is chicken math. <laughs> Calm like, down, Matt. But... Calm down. <laughs> All right, here we are up at our one of our local Lowe's in Henderson, North Carolina, and we're going to show you what to get when you need to build a chicken brooder. I guess we're going to start with the lumber cart. So what I want to do is start with the most important piece, and that is what we call luon. Luon is just a uh, thin piece of plywood, mainly used for underlayment, um, and it also is a species of wood. A lot of people don't realize that. Uh, so, but it's turned into a common term uh, called luon. Oh, oh, I think that's oh, it. This might be it right here. So something I want to show you guys real quick is when you're in the lumber aisle, you can spot the pressure treated lumber real quick. I don't recommend using that for this application, but you see how it's green. So that's your first giveaway. But the other thing that's nice about the Southeast or if you're out in the Pacific Northwest or really anywhere on the West Coast, you can find some lumber that is extra nice. Um, and, and here we have Southern yellow pine versus if you go down to the lumber at the other side, maybe I'll show you guys when we get down there. That's a white wood. We, I don't like it. It's way too soft. But when you're only going to need a couple pieces of lumber for this application, I would grab the Southern yellow. Or if you're on the West Coast, take advantage of grabbing that Doug fir. Okay, so here we are. We're in one of the lumber aisles at Lowe's. And here's what I'm looking for. And I'll be honest with you, I love this material right here. Um, it's not terribly priced, especially that lumber is through the roof. This is going to be a five mil thick, which is going to be a little over an eighth inch, if I remember correctly. And it's just a touch over an eighth inch. The reason why I love this is a couple things. Crap. So what I wanted to show you guys is you have a lot of options when coming in here, picking out all this lumber. The reason why I love Luan is it's actually a species of wood called Luan. And the reason why it works so well is it, look how straight all that grain is. This is actually a tropical wood grown in um, Southeast Asia. And it works great because it just makes a nice soft plywood. So you got a lot of straight grain, hardly any knots at all. But you'll see the biggest reason why we want this is because how thin it is, we're gonna make a big circle with it. Just in case you don't already have a bunch of screws laying around, you don't need anything special. The most important thing to understand what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be screwing the Luon into a two by four. A two by four thickness is gonna be inch and a half. So we don't want any screw really longer than let's say an inch and a quarter, but because we're only screwing in a five mil material, we can get away with something even just three quarters. So let's take a look and see what they got. Um, and when you walk down this aisle, you're gonna see all kinds of different types of hardware. Um, for today's purpose, we can get away with, and honestly, it'd be perfectly fine. It's gonna be your cheapest bet. It's just a regular drywall screw. You can get fancy if you're worried about corrosion and things like that. You can use drywall screws in wood? Are you kidding me? Oh. Well, the drywall screws usually go into wood anyways, holding the drywall. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's a good point. So even like right here, um, now we're not gonna get any today because we have so many, but something, just a regular drywall screw, bugle head, Phillips drive will be perfect. Like what? Uh, coarse thread. I definitely get coarse thread and they may not, oh, there you go. Yeah, these are nice and short. These are little one inch drywall screws. Um, but again, one and a quarter, which you're gonna see a lot, that screw would actually be perfect. Which so one? If I had to buy screws, I would get this one. And you definitely don't need a five pound, so just try to find something smaller if they have. Oh, wait, oh, a usually, smaller box. Yes, which they okay. actually usually do. 
All right, so I'm not exactly sure what the camera lady also slash chicken expert is how she's gonna set up the brooder tomorrow. But there are other pieces of hardware which are really nice to have while you're at the hardware store to pick up. So let's go take a look at that. Um, we love to hang things that keeps the baby chicks off of it. So one of the things I like to get is what I call shepherd's hooks. Uh, so we just come down here where all this fancy, yep, right here, all this fancy hardware. And if you're wondering what a shepherd's hook is, let's see. And of course, getting, there you go, yep. Um, that's huge, right here. It's not my first brooder. <laughs> this is perfect. So that's a shepherd's hook, because it looks like a shepherd's hook. So let's see if we can find some chain. So another thing I was just thinking about, and in theory, this could be better. I know I talked about the drywall screws, mainly because I, I know they will work. They're very inexpensive. But the bugle head does have a tendency to try to split the grain where one of my favorite screws and we use these in all of our coops and maybe we'll use them tomorrow here's just an example of what i call a pan head this is a pocket hole screw but that pan head acts like a washer and it looks it's called a pan head because it looks like a pan but anyways it'll flatten against the luon in our case and clamp it so maybe that's what we'll do tomorrow so if you really want to get fancy grab some pocket hole screws and these are in the premium wood screw section that's right imagine that what we're gonna decide to do tomorrow, but I don't wanna go home missing something. So again, we're thinking about how we're gonna hang the waterer. And I actually like this chain a lot. One, I think it looks good. And I like how big the loops are and they're very easy to cut. Um, and if you ever find yourself in this position at Lowe's, that's the chain right there. Um, nobody's ever around to help you. So I'm gonna show you how quick it is to get help. And that is to start doing something they don't want you to do right there and we're just going to cut it ourselves yeah. uh -huh. and then release there we go see see how easy that bent that's one of the reasons why i love this particular chain all right we forgetting anything plants we don't have time for plants oh it's a good thing they don't sell baby chicks here we'll never get out of we here we can look are they be in the plant section? One day they will. I'll guarantee it. Uh -huh. They'd be in the plant section. I think it's working. Did that work? Are we on? Are we good? What's going on, guys? Welcome to Video Chicken Live. Today is March 4th. We made it to March. Yes. How are we right. all doing? That was the longest five minutes of my life having to uh, stand here and watch that pre recorded video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Yesterday, Kristen and I. Went to Lowe's and just wanted to capture, hopefully. What to look for this chick season, and we're going to talk about brooders. Okay, yeah, so we're going to be building a brooder today, if you didn't already know. Um, we're going to give a couple more minutes for people to come in. But, um, again, it's March 4th. We are live. We're coming from our shop in Creedmoor, North Carolina. What you just watched, hopefully you were able to catch it. And hopefully it sounded good, too. Make sure uh, we had to move the whole studio, so give me a thumbs up that everything sounds good because I don't want to spend all this time if you guys can't hear me. Um, also, if you got any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, give us a wave. Uh, you know, anything Let you us know where you're, you're listening from. Yes, and I just remembered one very important thing I wanted to introduce in today's <laughs> oh, no. show. Megan, could you run and get the new device that is on the studio's table, please? Okay, I got a surprise coming for everyone. All right, so we got a lot to go through today. Uh, do we sound good? All the comments sound good on YouTube. Awesome. There's Instagram my dad, is sound good. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So Kristen, thank you for being here. Uh, You're we're out on the shop floor. Behind the camera right now is Nan. She's going to do the best she can so that we can show you how I like to build a brooder. Um, I just sent Meg, who's on audio, to go get something. I can't wait to tell you guys about something new I'm gonna introduce. I don't know if I even told Ingrid yet, but we got Ingrid behind the uh, camera, or I'm sorry, behind the computer, make sure everything looks good. Uh, so again, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them in the comment section. We're gonna make sure we get to them all. And today, as we already said, I'm gonna show you how to make a brooder. Are we ready to go? Yeah, we even have people on Instagram that are that are watching oh, us. I forgot. Yes, yes. And so are commenting. And I love that I have people on Instagram. We thought we would just set up this phone. You guys don't get the advantage of maybe the audio, so I apologize about that. But here's what it looks like. I can't thank you guys enough. And we'll definitely try to pay attention to Instagram. So, again, what we're going to do today is show you guys how we make our brooder. Yep. 
Today is the Bruder mat style, and we might have some other alternative Bruders coming up. Really? Mm -hmm. All right, so don't show. Oh, you know what? Bring it on in. Bring it on in. I might as well get this over now. Check this out, everyone. <laughs> I have a great idea. Is this not the most beautiful bell you have ever seen? Now, That's very ornate. Cringe, she hates the bell, but there is a reason for the bell. It sounds good, doesn't it? So the reason for this bell is I love giving away. And what I want to do is when you guys leave a question or comment that I think is just spectacular. Uh, it may not happen in this show. It may not happen for three shows. Maybe some lucky person in today's show, as they're reading the comments and I hear them, if I'm like, dang, that's a good point, right? Yep. Okay. Contribution. Um, yes, that's it. If you contribute a phenomenal comment, um, we're going <laughs> to ring the golden bell and you get a free T-shirt. Okay, great. Oh. Yes, we, I know. I didn't tell to, the we, CFO yet. We need to reissue these because you were wearing it yesterday. AV was wearing it yesterday. These are like, we, you need to reissue these. I do love these shirts. We're going to actually be bringing in a lot more shirts, but that's the point. Um, so please, if you have any questions or comments, um, I'm going to leave it up to me for right now. Um, I What are you pointing at? You need to talk to here, not to there. Oh, yeah, I also, know. I keep looking at the uh, monitor over there, but you are correct. Matt? Uh, yes. So Kenzie says I'm super loud and she can hear you breathing into your mic. So I did decide <laughs> to stop change. breathing. Yeah, don't don't breathe. I do not have, I don't have one either. Uh, thank you, Mackenzie. I'm gonna try not to breathe too heavy. However, so I just lost my. All right, so just turning her down a little. Appreciate the comments on the audio. Uh, we didn't have a, give ourselves a lot of time to check. Uh -huh. Well, it wasn't quiet in the shop to check. Yeah, that is true. All right, so we People got People were actually working here, so. Yeah, so hopefully you guys are here as well. Ago. We're gonna start getting ready to show you how I like to build my brooder. That's right. This doesn't mean it's the only way. Matt style. This, I would say this is Matt style. I'm gonna explain, I'm gonna actually just get into a lot of things. And of course, if you have any questions, anybody has any questions, you guys have questions, please ask them. Uh, Cause this is actually one of my most favorite things to do is actually teach people, not just what I think is best for, um, not, 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 okay, so there goes the bell. Teach people and build stuff. Um, it's gonna be tricky out here, so I'm gonna, style. yes. We're gonna teach you how to build stuff. Now, here's the thing about a brooder. Can you tell us real quick, when we think, tell me what a chicken, chick brooder is, and what are the- It's a nursery. A nursery. A chick nursery. You know what, let me go grab something real quick. You guys are killing me. Come on, wake up, people. Did we not have enough coffee today? Mm. Everyone's so like, oh, what's Matt going to so do? So these are the chicks that I had last week on the show. I did pick up some more chicks yesterday, but uh, after the drive home, they were a little weak, and I didn't want to risk it bringing them all the way back in again. So you can see they've grown a little bit. They have wings. They have wings They have now. grown a lot already. So that's, that's just in a week. That, that's the thing. Remember, now you're probably going to get out of focus, so we can't yeah. keep moving in and out. We're going to do the best we can on the camera. All, all right, right. Come back to all the... Right. All right. Sorry. Okay, perfect. Um... So we got baby chicks. Now here's the thing. They, oh, okay, no, no. <laughs> and we got Gus around here, so anything can happen today, guys. He's lurking over there, I know. silently just, watching. So we got baby chicks from last week's show. Salivating. And what we're gonna do? Oh, here oh, he comes. Oh, I, I, I acknowledge it. Said his name. Uh, yeah. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's uh, Catwoman 101. Yeah. Don't look at him. Why do we have to have a brooder for baby chicks? Because they need to be kept at a warm temperature, just like the mother hen would do. We need to keep them at a steady, warm temperature until they ha grow all of their adult feathers, and at that point, they can go outside. So what do the adult feathers do? They keep them warm. They keep them warm. It's just that simple. It's really, it's really about warmth, because unlike other birds, like songbirds, chickens are born able to eat and drink immediately. So they, within an hour, they're eating and drinking. So they don't need to be taught how to eat and drink. We just need to keep them warm and safe until they get all of their adult feathers and can go outside. All right, so w what you should learn from that point is we get asked all the time, well, Matt, when do, can we take the baby chicks outside? We look for when they're fully feathered. They have all their adult feathers, which is usually around? Five to seven weeks. Five to seven well, weeks. Five to seven weeks actually is when the mother hen stops mothering. So, so she, what happens she, she just stops. Like one, one day, she just, Five to seven weeks, usually around seven weeks. She'll just go back to her place on the roost, just like she always did, and she will leave all her babies. So that's when she says it's okay that you're on your own. So if we're gonna raise baby chicks in a brooder, we're the mama hen. Right. 
And we got to keep them warm. We got to make sure they have food and water. Mm -hmm. And we need to know when we're going to go safe back from, on our roost bar. Safe from predators. And let them figure things out. Right. Awesome. Now, here's a lot of times, in, if you're doing it yourself, uh, the other factors are is your coop ready? Is your outdoor space ready? Is the weather okay? Yeah. Huh? Because, like, chicks down here can't go up or can go outside earlier than a That's right. Or. Right. I'm ready to build a brooder. All right. I got safety glasses for you, too. All right, so hopefully you guys can hear me well. We got all kinds. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this. Now, I know I'm going to have a lot of my YouTube chicken police, and I love you guys. I really do. I love everyone that is going to engage and comment. <laughs> um, this is not the only way to do a brooder, but I'm going to explain why I like to do the brooder this way. So here we go. We ready to get started? I'm ready. Oh, the, I'm a little bit sore from yesterday. We are unloading, all dying. Unloading are, all that hemp? Yeah, I don't know if Nan can pan over to the hemp real quick that came in yesterday. We are all just so... What was it, over 600 bales? All right, let's grab a two by four. There, there was a couple bales. Um, there were a couple bales that came in. All right, so what I'm going to do is grab another two by four, please. There we go. Um, and we're going to try to find... We're going to leave out the straightest one, which I think I see it. We're going to set up a couple two by fours. Now I just grabbed some two by fours, actually Mag did, that are from our piles. And you'll see why we're going to do this. Because I'm a big fan of the proper setup makes it successful. All right, I'm going to stage them like this. Now, if you watched that video, and hopefully you guys did, um, if you didn't, we had a five minute video of Kristen and I going to Lowe's yesterday. It'll be on the replay. If you oh, it'll definitely if be on you the didn't replay. Get it. So, and this is what we acquired. We acquired yes. this lovely piece of Luan. All right, so this is Luan. Isn't that gorgeous? Luan is a, a, actually a species of wood that comes from Southeast Asia. It's great to make a thin ply because, I mean, I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera. That is just perfectly straight grain, tiny, tiny knots. Um, I don't even know what the Luan tree looks like. But I, I didn't know it was a tree. I thought it was a technique. It, well, so that's why I mentioned what I mentioned yesterday. Is it's just like everything else. You know, when we talk about, hey, go grab me the <laughs> skill saw. Skill saw is actually a brand name, even though it's a circular saw. We kind of get hooked on names that we associate general yeah. materials. Um, Luan is a little over eighth inch thick, and that's going to be very important. You're going to see why here in a little bit. Mainly used for an underlayment, but either way, it works perfect for what we're about to do. All right, am I still breathing heavy? As yes. you can see, I'm not in shape <laughs> like I used to be. Got my tape measure. Now, first step. Any questions so far? Way too quiet in here. You guys are killing me. There, well, there are questions. What's wrong with the forklift? <laughs> I said the same thing. I said we should move the forklift. Any questions or comments so far? Yeah, we have some questions. All right, well, let's let's get, come on, let's go. Questions, comments, anything? So somebody's asking the current wait time for a coop, and I figured since the sales team is here. Current wait time for a chicken coop. All right, we'll get back to that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now listen, a Luan, this is four by eight. What I mean is four foot wide, eight foot long. We're going to rip this right in half. So I'm going to mark two foot right there. It's always a good idea. Two foot, half a four foot. Yeah, measure from the same edge. And again, we're just making a brooder so it doesn't get real, you don't have to get real technical. But we see that, marking two foot there, right? And when I say rip, what that means, that's just a fancy woodworking term that means? Vertical, no, always. No, when someone says rip that board, you're it's cutting with the grain. With the grain. Oh. If someone says cross cut it, you're cross cutting uh, the grain. Now again, I know it's me wood snobs, I get it. But this usually that does mean lengthwise. We're going to refer to the grain that's on the outside. Yeah. So we're going to rip it lengthwise. And as you can see, what I've done is I placed these two by fours very strategically so that um, the it wood's not going to drop. Yeah, it supports both sides. When it gets cut, split in half, it's supported. Exactly. Um, of course, we got to be nice and safe. Now, here's the other thing I wanted to mention to you guys. I'm going to do this in a way that... Most people should be able to do it because not everyone's going to have a table saw. Normally, we would just put this on the CNC or rip it on the table saw, and we would have actually probably been halfway done already. I'm going to attempt to do the best I can to show you guys with the very basic tools. And so I, Lowe's and Home Depot will actually cut this for you. Yeah, that did make the five-minute video. I apologize about that. If you don't want to cut it, you can go to their panel saw station, 
they're going to be reluctant. They can do it. They turn the saw sideways and pull the board through. Great point. All right, so yeah, if there's any questions or comments, focus on the construction right now. That would be a good point to bring that up. Somebody says that you look like an as seen on TV salesman with your mic. Oh, yes, I do. Shamwow, shamwow, shamwow. Do you guys ever heard of the shamwow? It is your special day. All right. Now, so here's a circular saw. I just pulled this out of the shop. We don't use a circular saw very often. And just for safety's sake, I'm going to lower the table part of the, the, the plate here, the base plate. Um, just to expose a little bit of the um, blade. You want me to plug that in for you, sir? You know what? Let's go ahead and plug that in. I tell you what, I'm going to take it a step further real quick because we're not limited on time today, are we? I'm going to show you guys a tip. Mm, this 2x4 isn't as straight as I would like it, but we're going to use this as a straight edge. How's that sound? Mm. Okay. I plugged it in. Because, Be there, I mean, there's so many things you could do. You could freehand it, just even with a tape measure. If I was to go mm -hmm. two foot here and just come right on down with a pencil, this stuff's so thin, you could even, yep, I have one, a utility knife. Some people call it box cutters. I don't know. I like utility knife. You could actually score this enough and end up snapping it, and you'll get a nice clean cut. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the circular saw. So, okay, Matt. We are live, and so, if there's an injury, it's really going to suck. <laughs> Matt, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so Teresa says what size should they be made, the brooders? Okay, so... That depends on how many chicks you have. And Absolutely. the next question is, how many chicks will the brooder hold? <laughs> okay, yeah, so those are all great questions. So when we're done making this brooder, which will hopefully be about, <clears throat> if I don't talk too much, in about 15 minutes, you think we can do it? Yes. Um, we're going to talk a lot about... The finishing. The finishing. How to, how to set it up for the, for the chicks. Um, uh, kick that, I, kick that. Actually, yeah, that. I know that last week, let me share that I had the baby chicks that were day olds. Um, I took them home in a Bojangles box, and they have already outgrown it. So they grow fast. This brooder will last you a while. So that's what's nice about this brooder is this can take them from day one all the way to when they go outside. That's the biggest point I want to make here. Because I've already moved them once. It's not twice because I got another plastic one, and I'm trying to work up some other ideas for brooders, maybe for another time. But they they do grow fast, and they can be messy. So this is this is just a good option. As long as you don't have a hundred of them, like we did one time. I'm sorry, that was three hundred. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing right now is I normally wouldn't do this, but I thought I'd just show this little tip. If you're worried about cutting it straight. Just use a straight edge. So what I did is I just figured out my offset from the base of the saw. I still want the kerf, the, the thickness of the cut, to be right ripping this in half. I got to come over an inch and a half. So I'm going to put my straight edge, inch and a half. Quick clamps, great to have. Most people should have these. All right. Also, let me know, guys, do you like this? Do you like seeing us out of the studio? Is this fun? I still need to, go to, I, I need to go to the garden center. Yeah, yeah, Miss, uh, OK. So I'm going to put the straight edge right here. All right, we it have just another. occurred to me, I wore a black shirt today, so I'm about to get filthy. We had a question. Yes, questions. Ikan asked, how much did the materials cost? Ooh. Mm. Like how I much? I think that was in the initial video. How much was it? I think it was $28 for the Luan. Mm -hmm. And you're going to want, technically, all you're going to need is one 8-foot 2x4. Now, do you want me to do this? Or you want to give it a try? Go ahead. Okay. All right. So, we're going to take the circular saw. Again, I'm going to use a straight edge. I have it so that the blade should cut this right in half. Are we ready to go? Let's do it. Do All it right. Fast. Now, I apologize. I have no idea what this is going to it's sound going to be like. Crazy. If anybody from DeWalt wants to sponsor us, give me a call. <laughs> so they do want to see the builds and the explanations. 
I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. you they do want to see the build and the explanation. You guys like this? Yeah, they do. They're so like I tell you, I really love doing this. And there's, it's hard for me to go back to the basics. But this is where we started, right, Nan? Yeah. Remember that in the basement floor? Oh, those dirt. Dirty yeah, days. I, we actually even have a listener, Julian and Christy, that I mentioned last week, picked out their starter flock, and he bought all of his materials to build their brooder, and his wife said, sorry, you can't build that until we watch next week's show. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, now. So, sorry, Julian. Next thing I want to do is... This is hard for me to not want to go to the chop saw so we're gonna do it the again if you only have a skill saw oh we should have went hardcore and got out the old hand saw maybe a back saw um yeah let's set these off to the side well actually how did i do you did good 24 now also if you really want to get technical let's remember where our factory edge is uh but we'll put the factory edge down even though that was a pretty good cut no that's nasty um <laughs> By whose standards? Mine. Um, so we will know which way, which is the factory edge and which is the um, cut edge. We're just going to keep that down, and I'll explain why here in a little bit. All right. We need to move this out of the way. Um, right? No, no, not oh, yet. We need to cut the board. We're going to cut the board. I'm going to show you guys, again, if you only have a circular saw, the easiest way to do it. Questions, comments? Um, people are still just commenting on how they really love seeing the explanations on the build. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I need to hear that. Let's hear it, people. Let's, come on, engage a little. Everybody loves DIY. Everyone's... He is a very good teacher. Oh, I, I don't know about that. Okay. Next thing, but I appreciate it. All right, so next thing I want to do is we're going to need to cut two two-by-fours. I thought you said one. You only need one. We're going to cut one two-by-four into uh, two pieces. What is it that you have there? Where? Speed square. I, thank you. Awesome. I'm a, thank you. Yes. So this is a speed square, and what we're about to do is I need to cut two 24-inch long pieces. All right? So I'm going to take the tape measure, hook it, measure, nice sharp pencil. Look at Gus over there. He's like, I just want to see the baby chicks. All right. Now, a speed square, if you've never seen this, this is just a great tool. I know everyone may not have this, but if you're going to cut, if you're going to do the cut I'm about to do, this is a nice thing to have. I'm going to show you why. Now, I'm just going to line up my line, and it makes a perfect 90. And I can free cut that. But now everyone will have that confidence. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. But uh, you know what? Can you? Um, yeah. You're going to be like my assistant. Don't pull the trigger. I just understand. Just grab that circular saw. Come on over here. Even if I like the noise it makes, I can't pull it. No. <laughs> Nasty accidents can happen with, with a circular saw. I was hoping to use the little battery-powered one, and the road crew took it. Now, here's a little tip. I'm going to cross cut. Okay, we're going to cross the grain, so I'm going to make a cross cut. And if I really want to make it nice and perfect, I'm going to place the speed square so I can use it as a guide, just like I did the straight edge. Mm. Okay. Pro tip. Pro tip. Oh, oh, I almost messed up. So I'm just going to bring this right back down to where I normally bring it. Doop, doop. All right, just line it up there. Do not start the saw with the blade on the wood. Bring it back a little. You had the right idea. I appreciate I, I, it. I was, getting, I was getting there. All right. It was just that simple. Now, we're going to do that one more time. We ready? I'm ready. You want to give it a try? Go ahead. All right. So what was our length here? 24. 24 inches. We so we're going to cut. Two 24 pieces. Two 24 pieces. I'm going to keep 24 inch pieces. sneak yeah. in. I hope you guys love my saw horses. I love a good set of saw horses. Very easy to make. Great to have. Okay. We're going to do this again. Us. Make sure your blade is on the right side of the line so you're not cutting it short. <laughs> now we're going to kick it up a notch. All right? Yeah. This piece I'm going to cut next <laughs> is not necessary. You can take that luan, just set it off to yeah. the side a little bit. Thank you. Um, Can I correct you just for a second? You're going to correct me? Make sure I mean right as in the correct side. You Okay, I can see how that can be a little confusing. All right, so what we're going to do next is, if 
I remember my math and geometry, and I have not built one of these in what? God, six, seven years? I don't think I'm correct. I'm going to wait on this cut. It's been a while. If I was four foot, mm. we're going to get back to him. I'm going to show you. Oh, wait a minute. Mm. No, I have an idea. This is on the fly for sure. Well, this is on the fly. We're going we're gonna to give ourselves an option to absolutely crushing it. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to show people an option. Now, Kristen, I will need you. You know what? Maybe I can. Yeah, I will need you to hold that. Are mm -hmm. we still in a good shot? Any good questions, comments about brooder making yet? Um, Julian and Christy actually commented that uh, they say, I'm anxious to build this brooder because my idea is probably getting scrapped. Oh. <laughs> well, wait until we're done. All right, so what I'm going to do. Yeah. Lunch bell. Not in love with, there's a lot of Wayne on this one, but this is what we have for right now. So Wayne I'm, is the natural edge? Yes. What size is that, Matt? So I'm cutting two four-footers. I just realized I'm going to add a feature. You don't have to do this, but since we're trying to show everyone, I love options. What could, what what, could be? What could be, yes. What would Matt do? Mm. Yes, what would Matt do? And you know what? I think we're going to build it using this one. All right, so we're going to take the two four-footers. Otherwise, you could have four two-footers. Two. Without the feature. Two two-footers. Two-footers? Okay. Without the feature. Two okay. Two footers Now, here's the next thing that's going to come up. What kind of screws should we use? And we talked about this, well, in that pre-recorded uh, video. That's right. Folks, don't overthink it. But I'll tell you, what I prefer is we love the panhead screws. Now, I don't know if you can zoom in on that. And the reason why I love panhead screws is if you think about it, all screws are miniature clamps. And you can use, yeah, probably not. All right, um, a, what we call a bugle head, like a drywall screw, I think we talked about in the video. It'll work just fine. I like the pocket screws because that head acts like a flat washer and it's not gonna try to split the wood, it's just gonna sandwich it, it's gonna clamp it. Um, and a two by four is actually not a true two by four. It is one and a half by three and a half. So we don't want any screws, in our case, longer than one and a half inches. We're just gonna take our screws that we use for our coops and these happen to be one and a quarter so they won't poke through. Does that make sense? Perfect. Yeah. Are okay. we done with these? How's, uh, how's Instagram doing? We gotta make sure, I'm sorry folks, if you are not, yeah, there's, these people are not happy over here. Oh. I apologize, yeah, because they couldn't see anything. I forgot about it. Are we done with these? No, we are not done with those. What do we want to do here? Okay, let's We want do... to make a brooder. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. Let's come up here and see. Hold on, hold on. All right, let's do this. Let's, um, excuse me, grab a two by four. A fresh one? Uh, grab a long one. Yes, a fresh one. If that, yeah. We're going to make a tabletop-ish. It's not necessary. Grab that sawhorse, come out this way. Nope, grab this sawhorse, come out towards me. I know this is the fun. Grab the two by four. There's, I know my dad's laughing. You gotta learn to be a mind reader in the world. Do what I'm doing. Grab the end of the two by four. Grab the sawhorse with your other hand. Slide it back. There we go. Anyone in construction right now is laughing because that's one of the toughest things to learn is how to be a mind reader. All right, now let's bring these together a little bit. I have a question. Yes. Are we going to be offering a materials list? Oh, dear. Why do you always got to take it to another level? Yeah, we, we, yeah, we will. And if you watch the first five-minute video, the one of us at Lowe's, you can figure, Bring that, two by four figure that out. But no. we'll, I will put together, we'll make it easier. I will put together a video. To I think that's a great idea. And take notes. No, I, will, I will put together a video for YouTube that will have a shopping list, that will have all the pro tips. Very nice. How many, how many viewers are we up to? Uh, 63. 63. Awesome. So we are getting hired. All 63 people watching right now, thank you so much. And for whatever reason, if you're just joining us, Plus Instagram. Still good. Uh, we are live making a Oh, chip and those poor brooder. podcast listeners. I know. I apologize. Oh. That's why you got to come to the show. And don't forget the new golden bell. If you give me a great question or a comment that I just feel is such a great contribution 
to what we're trying to do here. If I love it and I ring that bell, you get a free shirt. Okay. How about a, how about a roast? A roast? <laughs> a free roast or we're going to be roasting? <laughs> All right. We're gonna, I don't want to run out of time here. So first thing we got to decide right now is we're going to take one of our eight foot by two foot long or two foot wide piece of luon. We're going to end up making a circle and we want to ask ourselves which part, which face, if you will, do we want facing out? And this is kind of a nice color. It has a blonde color. Or we flip it over here. We have a nice red rose color. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. Which do we prefer? Which should be on the outside? Red or blonde? Blonde <laughs> or rose? Rose on the outside. Rose. rose on the outside. Thank you. So what that means is, let's do this. We're going to flip it now. I'm going to say upside down. Now, Kristen, actually, could you grab another fresh 2x4, as you called it? Bring it on over here. I'll tell you, this is completely different doing it live, trying to make it look like I know what I'm doing. Especially since you haven't done it for seven years. I have, <laughs> I have not done this in so long. Yep, set it right there. Now, could you do me a favor? Hand me one of our four-foot pieces, please, of 2x4. Yep. Now, we mentioned the term Wayne earlier. This is just part of organic materials. When we say Wayne, it's that natural edge right there. I want that natural edge facing out. Um, you could get away with facing it in and hiding it. You know what? I am going to hide it. I am going to hide it because you won't see it. I just want to make sure we're not losing enough face that we can't catch it for the brooder. But what I'm going to do, oh, yeah, plenty. Okay. I am going to take one end of the 2 by 4 flush it up, which means it's, even, in this case, the, to the edge of the Luan, half a three and a half, mathematicians. Come on, don't be scared. One and three quarters. <laughs> 1.75. Oh, there's the screws. I'm okay. What we're going to do now is just we're going to start screwing it in. And I don't have to pre-drill this, but one thing I also do love about pocket screws, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it on the camera, mm -mm. it actually <laughs> is... This would be technically self-piercing, but it will drill out the hole a little bit. But because it's ply and not a solid piece of wood, you don't have you won't split the grain like you might think. Now that was on two. I don't want that. Turn the clutch down. Why? Two nine. Um, I don't like the fast speed. It's not necessary unless you're drilling. Right now we're driving screws, so I'm going to turn the speed down. It also gives you more torque, so it's a little bit stronger. And the clutch so important, so you don't overdrive the screws and strip them out. Screw gun versus drill. Yeah. Cool. One and three quarter. So look what I did. I drove that screw down there, gave myself a pivot point. I didn't care what the width was right here, did I? No, because I could pivot, I can adjust, and look at here. I'm going to increase the clutch just a little. I want to see that sandwich. Okay, perfect. Now. You make it look so easy. Well, thank you. Now, again, I got to speak to my fine woodworkers because uh, I know they want to, you know, they, they, they know everything. Um, normally, whenever you're screwing down a piece of plywood or even if you're drywalling, you call it rolling dough. You should always start at one end and then work your screws that way. Again, this is just a brooder, so if you're going to be that person to comment on it, I get it. Because what happens is it could bind. Does that make sense? Where you mm -hmm. think of it like rolling dough with the screws. All right, yeah. I'm going to do five screws. How's that sound? That sounds expensive. Five screws. Yeah, overkill. I mean, they're, they're like tiny chicks. They're not going to break out, break out of that. You can measure it. I mean, they don't have to be perfectly even apart, but whatever. Now, let's do the same thing. Well, this would be a good shot down here. Let's do this real quick. Grab me another four foot, two by four. It's about to get good, folks, I promise. All right. Um, We'll go with it. We'll go with it. I tell you what, let's flip it like this. Uh, okay, I'm doing the same thing. The edge of my Luan is flush to the end of my 2 by 4 I'm splitting in a half. So half of 3 and a half is 1 and 3 quarters, right? Right. Thank you. 1 and 3 quarters. Just taking a screw, coming up maybe, got an inch, all right? tell you, I love Doug Fur. You cannot strip out these screws. Uh, I should mention that too, the lumber we're using, the same lumber we use on our chicken coops, uh, this is rejected lumber. We reject, unfortunately, a lot of lumber based on appearance, but that's the wood we use for the pallets. All right, so I'm coming up here, 
pivoting off of that screw. Boy, and trust the tape measure. I tell you, sometimes grain can trick your eye. All right. Questions, comments? Somebody asked about the apparel, and we don't have it on the website yet. The what? The, the, shirts. the, the shirts and stuff. Yes. The merch. Ingrid, when is it going to get on the website? When I have inventory and prices mm. <laughs> and photos. Okay. <gasps> and number five. Yeah, the chicks are in a box. We need to hurry things up. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, they want to. I'm under enough pressure. They want to come out. What, on, uh, here, pull that <laughs> cord. wants them to come Never out. Never mind, I'll get it. And here. Hmm. All right, you need to smell? No, let's just slide this down this way. I'm trying to make it look like I've done this a million times and I know what I'm doing. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Again, it doesn't matter. I wanted the factory edge up and. No, factory, uh, my cut edge is up. Doesn't matter. All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to take our other piece of Luan, and we are going to do, a, a, I guess you can almost call this a butt joint down here. We got that on camera. Ooh, don't need that one yet. So you're putting those I edge get to it. edge? You're not supposed to butt it tugs, expansion and contraction. I, so I can Matt, hear and see the comments now. Yes, go ahead, Ingrid. Matt, you're putting it edge to edge. Yeah. Edge to edge. Okay, I just want to make sure because I got to. I didn't hear her. Edge to edge. Edge to, well, end to end. The edge ends, but end to end. In theory, you should leave a little gap there for expansion, contraction. I can, I can see all the woodworking comments now. What do you think? Well, the chicks aren't that picky. We'll be able to do um, close-ups maybe a little bit after. It's all yes, right. I would love to do some close-ups. All Chris, right. Oh. Kristen, did you say it's um, five to seven weeks they'll be staying in the brooder? Oh, yeah. Okay. At least. All right. Ready to have some fun? Now, here's where the magic happens. We get to make it a circle. We get to make it a circle. So this can be a little bit of a team effort. Let's do this, Kristen, if you can go down to that end. And what I want to do is let's just um, maybe pick up and slide that way together. All right, hold on, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, can you come down to the middle and hold this? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that, don't hit the light. Perfect. All right, we're still on camera, everyone see that? All right, perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, we're gonna get rid of this. <laughs> Questions, comments. There's Nonner tie dye Friday. In case anyone's yeah. wondering. People want a Dale update, Kristen. What, what is it? They want a Dale update. <laughs> Dale <laughs> That's update. That's probably Dale himself. <laughs> no, it was Misty. It's okay. <laughs> um, let's make sure we get the good shots. So the camera lady's gonna get back in front of the camera. Say hi to Gus, our shop security here. Hi, Gus. Well, I just, I know where the baby chicks are going. I can't wait. Is this for me? Oh, boy. All right, Kristen, do me a favor. Bring that end all the way around. Bring it right on around. Ready? Here's where we make the circle. Ooh. It's so very easy. Fancy. Come on around. We, oh, easy, easy, easy. Nice and slow. Now, let's bring it together. Now, do me a favor. Grab me a quick clamp. We're going to see if we can use some assistance. Um, this isn't going to work. Okay. There we go. On this side. All right. So I guess, <laughs> why don't you now stand, stand? There we go. There we go. All right. Now, Kristen, hang on to that. Yep. Hang on to this as well. And I want to make sure we get the shot just so people can see it. Perfect. All right. I'm going to come down here. Now, let's keep in mind... It's not made to bend, but it can, and that's why we go with a nice thin. Gus wants attention. Gus. No, no. Let's. Oh yeah, those are yours. Gus. Well, he he will chew them off to pieces. So what? Gus, that, Gus, yeah, Gus. Put them up on the table. Excuse me. You're not gonna All give right. him the chicks. Here, I'll get it. I'll get it. No, I need you to hold that. Okay. I just need someone. Can you hold? 
it's gonna kick out. All right, perfect. So we'll get the first one started. Right about, yeah, we got the shot. We in frame? Yep. yep. Nice. Da, 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 da. Don't let it go. There's way too much tension still on that. Don't let it go. All right, <laughs> now what we're going to do, Kristen's like, I don't want the damn dog chewing on the... Don't let it go. There you go. I just want to say, Shelby, who's watching, we are going to get to your question. I just want to wait till the build is done. I don't like where I put this one. Why? It didn't sit flush. There we go. That's a scoop of ice cream. All right. <laughs> So I can tell you what, and you just got to use your best judgment. We're using five screws. And I tell you, here's a great reason why using the pan head is good. Oh, my God. Gus. I just want to help, buddy. <laughs> say hi to everyone, Gus. <laughs> All right. Woo. That huh? is so pretty. How's that? Yeah. Oh, we screwed up. What? We were going to do the red on the... Outside. No, oh, well. I went backwards. Oh, well. <laughs> Still looks good. Still, Still looks, looks nice. good. So that's the idea. Maybe the red will be calming for the chicks on the inside. Well, I tell you what, this is actually maybe better. One can make the argument that it could be better because the screws are on the outside and they won't get corroded. You know, we talked about in yesterday's video that, well, if you're going to be picky, you can go get stainless steel or whatever. So, questions, comments, does that make sense? That's all we did is we just made a, per a perfect circle, all right? All right. Yes. Um, and maybe we can come closer? What do we think, or no? No, I'll get it later. Not yet. All right, then let's, here, Kristen, pick up that end. Let's go clockwise, 90 degrees, just like that. We're about to get into the special features. I'm going to explain what I mean by special feature. We went four, <laughs> foot, <laughs> we went four foot tall here versus you don't have to do that. What I was originally going to do is keep it really simple for everyone. Just take a two foot and screw the two foot here. All right? But you're about to see why I like the extra two foot above, making a total of four foot tall. Yes? Uh-huh. Excellent. Matt. So, Matt. For the overachiever. <laughs> So, Matt, you only need either f two four-foots or two two-foots, depending. So you can use two, fo two four-foots or two two-foots. Okay, so you don't need all of them. And I tell you, this is the way I've always done it. My first one I did with two-foots, I didn't think about this. When I built another one, I said, no, I'll make it taller, and here's why. Let's make a nice circle. Perfect, done. All right. Let's take a measurement from there to there. That's what I thought, five foot. So let's cut a two by four down the five foot. Should we do it the... Uh... Well, we've got 15 minutes left, so... No, we don't. Oh. We got all the time in the world. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Is it really 1245 already? Yeah. We've got lots 1248. To so we have a question, a feed question that maybe... Okay. Um, I'm going to get... She, she set it up here. Give me one second. Okay, Shelby Day asked... Um, what would you be your top grains or legumes or seeds to mix in a homemade feed? What are you looking for in a homemade feed? Is this a, a complete feed? You can make your own feed. There are recipes online, but typically you want some grain like um, peas, corn, oats, barley, wheat. And then if you're making your own feed, there are little packets with the vitamins and minerals that you put into it, which is why when you make your own feed, it's not pellets. It's usually just ground up, and then the powdered uh, vitamins and minerals get mixed up in it. That's so for it's chicks. called a mash. Yeah, for chicks. All right, assistant, oh, for chicks? can you come over here? No, I, come over the here. mash is for chicks. Grab the end of that board for me. Thank you. I don't know if I like this mic. I thought that way people would have no problem hearing me. But anyways, here we go. All right, so what I'm doing is about to cut the five-foot length two-by-four. 
You right? Yes. I was just about to tell you. I remember my father teaching me this as a kid. Always just let it drop. We got lucky there. No accidents yet. All right. I'm just anxious to get the chicks in here. I know you are. <laughs> okay. We need some shop chicks. They don't have yet. So all we're going to do, <laughs> normally I would pocket hole this because we here. do a bunch of pocket hole joinery. I just find it the easiest way. Not everyone has a pocket hole machine. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take, these are three inch, I believe. I'm just going to take four three inch screws. Again, I'm just going to use a pan head screw. This is what we use a lot with our chicken coops. It works perfect. You should pre-drill this. I get it. I'm being pressured for time, so I don't have all the time in the world. And I know I'm screwing in that grain splinter, but that's okay. It's going to work perfect for what we're doing. All right, so we've used 20 of the other screws, and we're going to be using four of the three-inch screws, right? For the materials list. Right? Sure. Okay. Sounds good to me. And those were one and, one and a half. One and a half. Little no, pro, pro one tip, and a, one and a when quarter. you're putting a screw in, go into the summer growth, not the winter growth. So between the dark lines. Between the dark lines, the wood will be a little bit softer and more cooperative. And it won't grain out on you. That's it. So here's what just happened. By having this crossbar up here, we have all five foot of two by four to hang our waterer, feeder, suet holder, whatever you want to hang. Even if you want to hang a little chicken swing, which they will not use. Anyways, <laughs> okay. And it's a nice handle to carry it when you need to move it. Yeah, let's move it. Just, ooh. Woo, isn't ooh. that great? Ooh. All right. That is the basic brooder. And again, the reason why I like this is it's big enough for your average starting flock of, let's say, six to eight. You can definitely get away with maybe up to 12. But they can be very happy in here all the way up to that five, six week mark before right. they got to go out into their hen house. That's what I love about this. Now, I'll never forget, we did a live video, and maybe Ingrid, when you edit this later, we can bring it up. Our customer in Michigan, she built this, well, her farmhand built it. And I love what he did. He didn't do this top part, uh, he left it at two foot, but he had a, he took some PVC and made a circle and attached netting to that PVC to act as a lid. Oh. Huh. Huh. Yeah, That's I was smart. thinking about doing that today. I said, no, we just don't have enough time. Yeah. And it, it is a little overkill, but by five or six weeks, yes, they will hop right. up here and hang out. And if someone can calculate what the square footage of this is, if it has a, a circle with a five-foot diameter, someone can. Oh, square footage. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure we got some mathematicians out there. That's a great point. <laughs> yeah. Now, I also wanted to mention, and Ingrid, again, when you're doing the editing, the last time Nan and I built one of these, you remember that, Nan? What, what did we do different? Uh, we used two sheets made oval. We, because you, we have 300 checks. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> so it's in, scalable. It is scalable. So in my defense, if you do the same thing to another piece of Luan, instead of making a circle, take your two eight-foot-long pieces and do this twice and make a big oval. Huh? It's going to take a special math magician to figure out square footage of the round thing. Nah, it'll no, be pretty easy. A, a okay, area so of a circle. here's what I want to do now. Are we ready for an unboxing? Questions, comments, what's going on over there? Are we yeah. sliding them over? Um, Are we bringing we it in? Yeah, so somebody can... who wants to know um, if you're going to put a floor. Okay, so actually that's what I was just about to start talking about. That is up for discussion. There are different ways to do that. We can put down cardboard, which I've done on this before. Really? Cardboard? Uh, yeah. Oof. Awesome. Was that okay? It was okay. So cardboard isn't a horrible... It was in my garage. So. What we always have to be careful of is a splay leg, right? Oh, no, there was stuff on top of it. There was uh, wood shavings and stuff on top so of it. So when we're talking about what do we put in like, the bottom of the brooder. Oh, okay. Well, in this thing, you want to put something on the bottom. You definitely want to put something on the bottom. What before I, your bedding. Before your bedding. Like so plastic what, or cardboard yes. or what, 
Because it is open. Yeah, a tarp. It, it is open, so just put a tarp down. Yeah. A piece of plastic. That would be easiest. Because then when, you, when you're done, you want to be able to just lift this off, move it, roll up the tarp. Wash it off or throw it away. Does that bring back memories? Throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> we had to do that dragging it up the basement stairs. So that's exactly it. Uh, like a burrito. Make sure you seal those ends. I would Hold those ends in. I would definitely put a piece of plastic down. Now, I know some comments I've had in the past when we've talked to customers about this, especially in the winter times. It's still cold up north, but now it is chick season. Yes, you could put down a piece of insulating foam. Mm. Hold on. Please let me finish. Okay. Thank you. To insulate it because we're really worried um, about how cold that concrete can be. And you do get moisture through the concrete. Right. But on top of that, then put down a piece of plywood because here's the thing. Chickens love foam. They will peck that to death. Styrofoam. Yeah. yeah so be, be, think about those things. So this isn't the end be all, but this is the basic starting stage, if you will. That's Kelly right. has right. Kelly has a question. She asked, I have it up there. If, um, is there a reason you, don't, you, you made the brooder round instead of a square? Yes, because I find it just to be extremely easy to go get the materials, especially for the, I mean, gosh, we don't have, what, $40 in lumber, maybe a little bit more. I don't know. I just found it was the oh, easiest no. way. This was $28 in a two by four, I don't know. Like 10, 12. 10. Right. So taking the materials we had and how we built it, it just naturally makes it round. And I just thought. The ground is better because the if the chicks are crowding together, no one gets stuck in a corner and suffocates. Oh, that's a good point. That is why we make it round, Kelly. Yeah, <laughs> nobody puts baby chick in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I wanted to do some unboxing, so let's recap real quick. All right, so here's the brooder. Put down some plastic. If you're on cold concrete and you want to put down some foam, put a piece of plywood over that. Or plastic. You could, if it's a nice thick plastic, baby chicks are curious, just like chickens are. I, they love foam. I think a tarp is probably best. Yes, I would agree. Now, you have some baby chicks here, and I wanted to show you guys uh, how we would set this up. So we should still have time. And I also wanted to do a quick unboxing. Can we bring the camera to the circle? Uh, no, or let's bring, bring the, the circle, circle and then let's the tilt the camera down. There we go. How, how about that shot? Oh. Autofocus oh. should be kicking now in. Now I get to decorate. All right. Now Kristen's going to decorate. Right, so what I want to do real quick is, well, you know what? Before we do that, <laughs> now the fun begins. There are ways to decorate. You can use stone <laughs> or you can use wood. This piece of wood actually comes with a black sol soldier fly larva stuck to it. <laughs> That's really nice. That's a nice touch, but chickens yes. like that kind of decoration. Of course it does. It's, a, it's like the new edible decoration. I think Gus knows what's going to happen. All right, so we've got nine people. <laughs> I have not camera. forgotten all our viewers on Instagram. Thank you so much. If you have questions or comments, I know we haven't been over here checking it. I apologize. I just want to do something a little bit different. What's going on? Matt has a saw out. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, while Kristen's doing I'll tell you what. If you want to go ahead and do this it. It's my want... favorite water, the nipple water. So Lisa Haymaker has a good comment. She said, if the uprights were only three foot tall, couldn't you get by with one two by four that was 12 foot? You could. You yes. absolutely. There's so many different ways to kind of slice it. Yeah, it doesn't it have to be four feet. I was thinking that too. It could be yeah, three Yeah, I just, I have to pull a 12 footer. Well... There's reasons why I do like to hang things. And even with a chicken coop, we talk about But, I mean, couldn't you just hang it? Yeah, you could hang it lower. Have a smaller chain? Yeah. If the chain is smaller, it's that just a little bit more stable that maybe does allow the chicks to hang out on top of things. Versus if it's a little bit longer, it's oh. that more unstable. Keeps I, down. I okay. It. I, I just Four foot. Plus, I like even numbers, I guess. The only good odd number is number nine. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Go what ahead. are you doing? Okay. I'm so, decorating. Well, all right. You, you start decorating. I want to show some people some things that are very typical, uh, very common, very affordable, very available. And that is, okay, we got to keep the brooder warm. How are we going to do that? The most common way we see is with, we call them brooder lights. Some people might call them construction lights. It is a device just like this, all right? And it comes with this clamp, comes with this dome, comes with this protector. The most important part, if... You are going to use this, which I don't advise. For the record, I don't advise doing it this way, but I know a lot of people do, okay? Is if you go with the light, make sure, 
It has the ceramic Edison style socket. All right, that is rated for, and it should say on here. It's on the Yep, right there it is. 660 watts. Most likely you're going to need to use a 250 watt infrared light. So got to make no. sure. Well, you don't have to use You the are so spoiled. You're in the south. There's a 75 watt bulb in there. I know, but you most people, half the people are up north. No, I'm just saying that it depends on what your heat needs are. That uh, is at, correct. At the farm store, they did not have any other options That's but a 250 store. watt bulb. Oh, yes. Okay. They had no other options and that there was some poor uh not poor, but like unfortunate um person that was picking out chicks and I spent 15, 20 minutes with her in the farm store because she was going to put her baby chicks in a little, little tiny plastic tub and put that 250 watt bulb with the clamp light on the edge of the tote and they would have been dead Fried in an hour. Fried chicken. With that much heat in a focused, closed tub, dead. Okay, and another reason why I like the four foot is you just used the keyword focus. And I, I yeah. did want to talk about that. How do we know? Is it too cold? Is it too hot? What wattage should I use? I will say most people are going to use that 250 watt infrared. And heat it's also lamp. a waste of energy. It, Sometimes, if you don't, it could, can be overkill. It can kill them if it gets too hot and your space is too small. Absolutely. Another reason why I love this big brooder. And if, we're, if we were going to use a heat lamp like this, we would take this clamp off and use this little device right here, okay, this little like ring, and you can hang it. Now, here's the most important part. You want to tell them how do we know if, if we're using a heat lamp, if it's too warm or too cold? By how they act and how they sound. If they're huddled underneath the light and they're like just all huddled up together and piling on top of each other under the light, they're too cold. Or if they're making that sound that's a high-pitched cry. Uh, that it's, it's not warm enough. Um, if they're chirping happily and eating and drinking and kind of spread out or sleeping, that's, that's all normal, that's happy chick behavior. And I, I don't know if I missed that part where if they're out on the outskirts away from yeah, the focal yeah. point. If they're trying to get away from it, yeah. If they're trying to get away from it, then it's too true. hot. Now, so you can use these. I, here's why we don't like them. One, especially if you're using a 250 watt heat lamp, you got to be extremely careful. Don't just trust this clamp. If you're going to use this, make sure no matter what, it can never fall. So many brooders and chicken coops, you never need to heat your hen house, but so many people do it this way. They catch their coops on fire. Mm -hmm. But this is, if you are going to use a heat lamp, make sure it has that ceramic base. So it's rated up to, if you're going to use a 250 watt, but like Kristen's saying, yes, you got a 75 watt. She's very spoiled down here in the Carolinas. Well, they were indoors. That's true. Yeah, okay, that's so a good point. So if it's 60, 70 degrees in your house. So okay. we, we have we heat lamp or heat tray. Okay, let's right, get wait, into wait, that. Uh, so anyhow, this is one option. This was this is 10 to $20 at the store, the silver part, the lamp part, and the bulb itself. If you get the 250-watt bulb, it's about $10. So this setup is going to be roughly $30. Now, I do want to make sure everyone knows we are not getting paid to promote any of these products. Uh, we just do this because we love chickens. We love education. We love training you. And if there's any, or teaching you, if there's any questions, comments, please keep them coming in. But what I want to do is show you guys a new product. How Gus, much, he's how, about to tip that light. How Thank much you. did that cost? I don't know. Ugh. I don't ever look. I know. I'm so, I'm a Did you get it from Amazon? All right. So I did get this on Amazon. So someone, someone can put it in comments. And look that up. And yes. It. So we went on Amazon to say, okay, we need another heat plate for today's demonstration. And we love heat plates because they mimic the mama hen where the baby chicks got to go underneath the heat plate and get warm. It's really self-regulating, but you, there are some adjustments, which we're going to show you here in a little bit. Um, it, more importantly, it's extremely safe. Would we all agree? Yes. Okay, good. Now, this is brand new. Have you seen one of these before? It's pit orange. <laughs> If you've never heard of the pit game. My family loves pit. World's best card game. Anyway, so let's do an unboxing. Let's open this up We real like quick. the 1970s version that's um, orange like that. We are very familiar with Brincy. We love the Brincy products. Uh, they're black and yellow. Um, I am not a fan of the products that you're going to see on Amazon. They're mostly black and red. Um, those are Chinese knockoffs. You can buy them. They're not going to be as good. Um, I love Brincy. They don't pay me to say that. I wish they would. Uh, but there's a K&H. I have not had a chance to see where it's made, but maybe we will here shortly. So we're going to do an unboxing. And there's something interesting. 
that. Where can I do this? All right, I'm just going to do it over here. And so, Kristen, when do they usually outgrow the brooder? Like, so Julian said that he had it in, like, he was told 12 weeks. Yeah, I mean, he's in Connecticut. Right. So it could be 12 weeks before, I mean, and he gets his poop, you know. So it'll probably be 12 weeks before he gets his poop and the weather's good enough for them to be outside. Right. And in that case, once they start getting bigger, you will have to put something on the top because they will jump out. Yeah. And they will roost on top. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, um, it's thirty six eighty is the brooder. Oh, see, that's that's that the price of these has come down. Actually, these used to be eighty bucks. Easily. Yeah. So that is really good because that makes it comparable to the price of the heat lamp. So that's a heat tray is is about thirty seven dollars. So this is a forty watt heat tray. You just plug it into your normal. You know, you can do a fifteen amp, twenty amp, regular one ten outlet, and it is made in China, which I'm sure even the Brincy ones are, but. The Brincy is just one of the, I think probably one of the original designers yeah. of the heat So plate. let's just set this in here so we can demonstrate. Well, hold on. Looks. We're going to, I know, you're being a little feisty today. Uh, here's, what I, here's what I thought was interesting about this. We want to make it adjustable, okay? As the baby chicks get older, we're going to bring the heat plate up. But look what this does, okay? We just pop these little pegs into these holes that act as the legs. But I noticed if you wanted, you could... Okay, never mind. I lied. I saw the wrong <laughs> picture. I thought you could put it at an angle. I know you can. I think it looks like you can. There you Amazon. go. You could put it at an angle there. And that would accommodate different age chicks because I've had that issue in the past. If you go to the farm store and you get the chicks of the week this week, and then you go the next week and get the chicks of the week the next week. Because you're Christmas. Then you have chicks, and then the next week. <laughs> and then, then you have chicks that are three weeks apart, and they're different sizes, and they have different heat requirements. Angling it would take care of that. That's very Plus, exciting. So I see Plus what they bandits. did. They made it so that when they're the smallest, youngest, you can put it at an angle. Let's see if I just did that right. I did, I think. So our mathematician said 19.63 square feet. 19 feet, 63 inches square feet. No. Okay, continue your decorating. Okay, that's great. <laughs> okay, so now we know the square footage of the area, of the circle. All right, can we get the camera pan down? So again, this is real simple. Just put it inside the brooder. I do, again, I like this because now we're able to keep it at an too. angle. That should keep the baby chicks off of it. But it also allows them to go in and out, right? Um, especially when I they're I was kind of hoping that the angle would be that they, they could use the entire length of it. Like, the, this is all the way to the ground, so. Yeah, but that means they can walk a little bit further back. Yeah, then you're creating a, cor a corner back there, and they could get suffocated. Hmm. So, again, we've never tried this. I saw it. I liked what, it. I did you, like can this. Can you do the angle at the top? No, you can't. I thought you could uh, all the way up. Okay. But you can adjust I, it to I make it taller. I wouldn't recommend the angle then. At okay. all. Real? Okay. No, not if it's... Chickenista has spoken. I don't know. No. Not if okay. it goes no, all the way no, to the no ground. Okay, no angle here. Maybe if you put it up on... Little risers. So they <laughs> See, th right. that, that might work. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to the next extreme all the way up. All so right. that would be for an older chick. Yep. And again, it's self-regulating. You just plug it in. It's a set and forget it. Just plug it in. You're good to go. So we got the, you know, not, I tell you, remember the days of the V8 Fusion? We used to make the best chicken waterers out yeah, of I those V8. I a few stainless steel nipples. Okay, I for saw you to try, that. I maybe definitely, for next show. I'm so glad you did. Maybe, yeah, maybe we could do that in the next show is how some DIY um, waterers. And we, I did bring the little vitamin packet, which is not necessary but helpful. The other thing, too, about this bar, what I really love, especially for the water, because I love the ones that can hang, is you just get a regular shepherd's hook, okay? And you just put it up here, you know, wherever, maybe over here in the middle. It doesn't really matter. Um, Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, so you just put it over to the side, and you just drive it in just like that. Okay. And, again, if you watched the video in the very beginning, you saw that why I like this chain is I like the big rings. It's very easy to cut, very easy to bend. But here's what I like. And maybe we'll do that in next week's show. Next we'll week we're not going to be here. Who? What? Next week we'll be doing... Oh. 
Our That's a good point. Deep litter clean out. Um, we do need to make sure we mention the people about next week's show. Yeah, I didn't that know about this. Next week? You don't know about next week's show no. yet? Next week's show is huge. Biggest show yet. <laughs> I'll tell you here in a minute. Okay. Um, so check this out. All right, Nan, get a shot of this. All right, so here we're, we're hanging a feeder, which is fine, which is good. Um, and you can also hang a, um, a waterer. But here's what happens. As they get bigger, they get taller. Well, you just simply come up a couple rings. Boom, done. You, you see what I'm saying? You feel me? Look how easy that yep, was. Yep. That's why I love the shepherd's hook. I love the chain. Yep. It's just that simple. Again, Nan made a great point. Bring it to the yeah. edge so it is easily accessible. So yeah, you do want to elevate the food even when they're little tiny chicks because they peck and scratch just like adult chickens. And they're gonna scratch all of the bedding into the open feeder. So both of these are open feeders and you want to elevate them to about shoulder height so that it minimizes some of that. So you can elevate this by putting it on a brick or a piece of wood or whatever you can find. It works on both. Okay, how are we doing on time? And this water it's 110. Can, can go right here. Oh, that's another good I forgot about that. So that that's is a nice a little, advantage a to this type tip. of water with a flat bottom. I yeah. love that water, but if you go to the farm store, you're gonna get one of these. And these are cheap. These are like three dollars, two ninety nine. And they sell these as well that go with them. Or they also go with canning jars, the narrow mouth canning jars, and you can get a larger canning jar. Can you show up above? Yeah, there we go. So that, it can go like that, or you can have this lid on it. That's about Or a larger, you yeah. can go, if you want bigger capacity, you can go to a bigger canning jar, and it'll still fit in that right there. As long as it's a narrow mouth. Narrow yeah. mouth. Right. And then um, this is a larger capacity to feeder that I like. When they get a little bit. Yeah, I love this. Get like Cause, teenagers. Because babies can use it all the way up to teenagers. Yeah, I love that feeder. Okay. But if you have this water and this water, they will probably go to this one. But it'll be a lot of work to keep it clean. Yeah, the nipples keep the water cleaner, without a doubt. And I think that's just the best way to Plus go. Plus, it's easy to transition them to it a water is. bar. Oh, that's a good point. It is pretty When easy. they're used to Very nipples. Very nice. All right, questions, comments before. I want to talk about next week's show. My daughter, yes. Would you like to go ahead and bring the baby chicks in here? I, I um, plugged the heater in. Oh, you did? Yes. Jed nice. is dying to come in. Oh, and I did want to mention what? Question. Not sure what's going to. Hopefully the bottom doesn't fall out. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead and bring the baby chicks in. Yes, now, what oh, were you going to say? Well, there's a pack of hardware in there next to the heater. And what, what would we advise putting on the floor of the brooder on top of the tarp or plywood or plywood? Oh, that's right. We didn't get to all that. I, the industrial hemp, I think, is just amazing. It will work. The baby chicks will not get high. They're not eating it. They're just pecking at it, which chickens are going to do their entire life. Jenna, do you want to let them out a little bit? And maybe Gus will be a well-behaved boy. He's well-trained in the art of baby chick keeping. Right, Gus? Um, pine shavings is a very affordable material that will work just fine, especially because it's readily available, but you can use industrial hemp. And I'll tell you, the first person that told me about industrial hemp was a customer of ours that used it in her brooder. All right. So Teresa asks how long to keep the chicks from the other hens so they don't get picked on. Ooh, great question. Oh, like when they're full grown almost. I would say five. Same size. They yeah, gotta the they, they got to be about the same size. Okay, so before I forget, well, I guess when we get the camera back up, I can talk about it. But here's the baby oh, chicks. Yeah, we, put the put the jet to do. You want to put the feeder right on the ground? Are we gonna have a cook camp? A brooder camp? There's a lot of things I want to do. I can't wait to um, hopefully have our own coop one day again. Uh, ooh, that one's is that pasty butt? There is a little pasty butt. So we have a baby chick with pasty butt. Most we could, of them, or a little bit of them, have pasty butt. Yeah. Pacey that butt is good. something you got to pay close attention to, um, and it usually is a sign that if the temperature is fluctuating a lot rapidly. Mm -hmm. I see two that need some scraping. Some, some loving, some picking, mm -hmm. some scraping. Mm -hmm. What is the best way to do that? To, to um, Just moisten it warm, with a warm cloth and pick it off. Gotcha. And it's okay if you get some of their fluff. 
So some, right. somebody asked how long do you clean how how often do you clean the brooder? Again, a depend? great question. It, de it depends on how many you've got in there, if any of it's getting wet. If any of it's wet, you should remove the, the portions that are wet because yep. wet is not good for baby chicks. And I've had a lot of customers. I've never done this, but I've had a lot of customers deep litter their brooder. They'll just add layers on top of it. They said it works great. I'm a fan of deep litter. Yes. Especially with any I've, sort of home maintenance. I've seen you deep litter a lot yeah. of things that probably... <laughs> Just put new on top of old or dirty, right. you know, like clean on top of old. Look at new. Gus as being a good boy. You Love William. it. All right, before I forget, because I know we're probably coming up to 130, which is our mm -hmm. hard cutoff. Where are we at, 114? Right. Yes. Make sir. sure, I want to hear if there's any other yes. questions, comments. Yes, yeah, I, I have questions. Yeah, How many questions. viewers are we at right now? I always love to know. 86. 86. See, the show is growing. 86 people, thank you, you get it right now so much. Uh, All right, for joining here's a, us. here's I hope a question. You enjoyed today's show. We're going to talk about next week's show. I apologize. I thought I told you. You're going to love this. This is your favorite subject. Chicken poop. Chicken poop. Yay. We are going to be on site. See that somebody's not happy. You hear that? Uh, someone's not happy. It's the one you just put in the box. I don't know. I'm going to put the, the other heat on them. Okay. Just because they don't know to go under there right now. So and next, it's not warmed up. Next week... We are going to be. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> yeah, again, this is just demonstration purposes. We're going to make them happy here in a little bit. Uh, next week, we are going to a chicken coop that has yet to be cleaned out. It, they've been using the deep litter in an American coop for over a year. Okay. And he said that we have his permission to go there live next week, clean out a chicken coop right there. A four wow. by six sign up. Yes. So next week's show is going to be huge because not only are we going to be cleaning out a coop live and showing you, I wish we had scratch and sniff video. <laughs> we don't. Smell uh, smell of vision, right? Um, we're going to be cleaning it out live and taking it to his garden. And we're going to be able to talk a little bit about that. I know you guys are all garden freaks. I'm not. I don't know the first thing about it. But that is one of the best things about chicken droppings is using it as fertilizer, and he's going to till it into his garden when we are there cleaning it out, or after we clean it out. Nice. Good yes. trip. So we're going to bring all the gear out there. We're going to go live. Hopefully he's got phenomenal internet. And look at one just jumped up inside the cage already. That one's really like, oh, dude, I'm so cold. Uh, all right, any other questions? Yes, we have we a question up here. So where, where do the chicks go between the brooder at six to eight weeks and the hen house at 16 weeks? No, the baby, the six to eight weeks would go into the hen house. Right, but if you already have full-size chicks in there, oh, well, that's, like hens, that's yeah, I think that's, that's what she's asking. A very good question, and that's why there is not an easy answer. There is no easy answer because yeah. you want to try to avoid that at all costs, to be honest with you. But we are well aware of chicken math is a very serious disease. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the best way to do this is using the mama hen as the brooder. The mama hen does everything we just did you don't have to build a brooder if you got a mama hen for free for free she'll just make sure the baby chicks have access to food and water she does everything else um and then there is no fighting but that is one of the most difficult things to do is to raise baby chicks to the right size and introduce them into an existing flock and we have seen with our own eyes that the our opinion, the best way to do is make sure they can free range. Make sure they have, what am I annoying? There we go. Make sure that they have plenty of room to escape from one another. If they are in a run full time, you, it's best to wait till they're the same size. Yeah, and also good to have um, additional food and water. I had talked about this in, in blogs before, but if you're going to take two kind of two different flocks and try to integrate them, make sure there's enough resources so they don't fight over resources. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Um, and then so, somebody wants to know what the brand of water thing is that has the nipples on it, what brand it is. Um, I think it's Premier Poultry. Yep. And my father brought this up. He brought it up in last week's show where he saw it. He couldn't believe how cheap it was. Um, I can't remember what he said the price was, but that is a they're great about, water. They're about $8. Uh, I know, there's chicken poop. Who, who ended up cleaning the table last week? Here, you just hang on to that. Uh, me and Meg did. Thank you. No, it was me and no, you. No, no, I'm sorry, me and... Oh! Oh, wow. you are... Wow. No, no, well, no, you no, and Ingrid are on good terms for a while. Yeah, right? cleaning <laughs> for a year last week. Wow. Yeah, oh, 
Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. Sorry, yes, that was me and Ingrid. <laughs> All right. So and I'm she gonna... actually took the initiative and said, I think we need to clean this up. And <laughs> All right, I so said, Instagram oh, okay. Live, thank you so much for taking this whole time. I apologize. I have not gotten to any of the comments over here. Definitely appreciate it. I wish that a bit. they would let like, us stream live to Instagram, but they don't. But there's non Mag and Ingrid is over I'll there. Thank you them. so much. And we will see you guys soon over here on Instagram Live. So people are asking, Mabel's asking if this has to be indoors or can you use this outdoors? And if you could, like, how would you no. control the, they're wondering how you control like the temperature. Easier. I can't hear. I can't hear, Ingrid. How would you control the temperature in the brooder if it was outdoors? Oof. With a heat source. I, it helps a lot to have a cover as well because, you know, all of this heat is just, uh, you know, it, it rises, heat rises. So I have found that even with the 75 watt bulb, if you can cover the brooder a little bit, you can, you can manipulate the temperature a little bit better and you don't have to use more energy or a higher watt bulb. So the same would apply if it's in a cold area, um, in a shed or somewhere where it's not conditioned. Having a cover definitely helps. Like for instance, if we had a cover that just went over, maybe even another piece of Luan or something thin, something that would go over half of this and the heat was <coughs> underneath, it would really help. Also, I wanted to mention too, that even though you don't need a heat lamp, you do need a lamp. Um, you need some sort of light, an overhead light, because the chickens, even though they don't need the light for warmth, they do need light to be able to see the food and water. And it's best to leave that light on 24 seven when they're young, because we want them to have plenty of opportunities to eat and drink. And like other young animals, they do nap a lot. So I wanted to show you guys something real quick I was talking about earlier that you could do with the heat lamp. And let's see if I just just can do this without clean. getting yelled at by our chicken expert. That's funny, Mike Trapp said the same thing. What, oh, about covering it? No, about hanging the, oh, yeah. the, the heater, heat lamp. All right, so it's just this simple, okay? This ring right here, just pop it out, hook your chain, put it back in. Done, okay? I missed the loop, forgive me. And then, you can adjust the height accordingly. And then if you really want to get fancy, you know, you could run, take the cord, zip tie the cord to the chain. Just like that. And that'll help obviously keep it more vertical. You could tape it, whatnot. But again, see, look at the baby chicks are coming right over to it. They love mm -hmm. it. Um, with the shepherd's hook, it's so easy to, if I want to go a little bit further down, like, yeah, I'm freezing down here. Oh, that's going to be too low. No, Maybe. no, it's fine. It's cold in here in the concrete. There we go. Cold. Just like that. Boom. Keep it simple. Keep it easy. That's all there really is to it. All right, any other questions or comments before we wrap it up? We got about eight minutes before our hard cut off. So Farmer Brad said that he wraps the heat lamps with um, a 3.5-gallon bucket. He does what? I don't, I'm not following. Well, he um, he puts a hole in the bucket, so I guess it, the bucket acts like a tube for the heat lamp. To direct the heat, like the mm -hmm. the silver reflector dome does, to direct the heat down. See, it's too hot. That was too hot for him. See, well, they all, they uh, all, I don't know. They're, no, yeah, they're yes, feet. they all got. Yeah, but they're all like, dude, it's so hot. <laughs> there. See now, we're gonna just bring it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Victory in the Begins in the Garden said that this was the most complicated brooder ever. <laughs> <laughs> it is no, well, it's so <laughs> well. Okay, okay, okay. To be fair, to be fair, yes, the easiest thing to do is just go get a Rubbermaid tote. But find a Rubbermaid tote where you aren't going to have to get a bigger one. Or it's disgusting to clean out too. No, oh, she's running off to get something. Yeah, so I, I, I get. There's no perfect way, but this is just what works for us. I find it extremely easy. Also, I think it looks good, especially when you do the big hockey rink oval-looking shot um, where you add another piece of uh, four-byte Luan, making it one big oval. All right, questions, comments? Keep coming them in, bringing them in. Uh, let's see. No, 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 no. See, look, at what was that one? Someone said the only downside, what, what Lisa Haymaker said, 
is that oh it was on that um that your heat tray was made in china because she's trying to avoid making china buying china totally products. agree lisa yeah thank you yeah um it, it stinks we try to buy as many things non-china um unfortunately it's just you, you, sometimes you win sometimes you lose but i definitely appreciate that comment um we got to some of these the previous brooder as a demonstration but there are other ways you can set up a brooder you can use a guinea pig cage or a small animal cage which has the plastic bottom and the wire top you can use one of those especially for uh, just a few chicks you can use a glass aquarium i saw those pretty large ones for 60 dollars at the pet store this week Hold on, um, what, did, what did that say? What did that say? Which, Especially the negative comments. What are the, or you can use it. I don't know saying? which one you're talking tough. about, man. The, the one that was just right there. You you stopped. Go go up. Go up right there. With the wide open two, will it be really hard to heat regulate it to keep outside? I already just dressed this. Okay, well, I apologize. I, I think, I didn't yeah, know. That's why you, you have, have to, want to keep it outside. You have to trust me, man. I trust you. You do not. What are the alternatives? <laughs> Even in... This environment, being in a warehouse, I would definitely cover half of it. I thought you were supposed to keep them safe from the hens. That's what she was, when we were talking about integrating two flocks. Yes, when they're young, they have to be safe from an, an existing older flock. Again, another great reason why we want to, make, using a broody hen, hopefully we'll be able to do that here at the shop and show that. I thought you were supposed to keep them safe from the hens. All right, scrolling up, chicken math is fatal. It is? I don't know if anyone's ever died from chicken math, but boy, it, it is. <laughs> is that Dale? Is it? Is it? Is it it's contagious. <laughs> Everyone's going to die. 125 a gallon aquarium. You get them, Ingrid. Yeah, see? See? <laughs> All righty. Right. Um, I guess we're ready to wrap it up. Don't forget, next week we will be live. Weather permitting, let me be clear. Weather permitting. We're going to be, uh, it's about 20 minutes from here. We're going to clean out a chicken coop that's never been cleaned out. It's a four by six hen house with an 18 foot run. And we're going to not only clean it out, we're going to take that deep litter and take it to his garden and till it in. Um, I don't think we're actually going to get into the whole tilling it, but I definitely, I'm sure there's a lot of questions um, about what do you do with it after you clean out your hen house. Yeah, I wouldn't even till it personally. Ooh. Oh yeah, no till. Oh, so here we go. This is going to be interesting. Modern gardening techniques is no-till. Yep. And I do believe the customer, he said he'd be, he has no problem getting mic'd up, come on camera. So we're going to hear what he has to say. Can we just make a side note of how good our dad is? Look how sweet he is right good now. He's just staring at those <laughs> chicks. He's such a good boy. He is, actually. He's been around baby chicks, baby turkeys since he was a puppy. And that's how, as far as I'm concerned, a dog should be. Well. But not always. When? Yeah, let's not talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> Gus actually gets a little protective of his birds. Uh, we had a little incident. All right, so are we through all the questions and comments? Are we ready to wrap it up? I think so. All right, Lisa awesome. Haymaker says that chicken mat math isn't necessarily fatal, but it's very contagious. It's very contagious. That is very true. Something that we tell all the people that are just getting into chickens, be aware of you're going to want more baby chicks, especially this time of year. Also, when you start finding out how beautiful, there's there's so many more colored eggs other than just white and brown. We do have the myths coming up. Are we Will you have your salesman, Mike? Oh, next yeah. week? Well, I, I did this because I knew I was going to be making all kinds of noise. And I didn't want to be hitting it. Um, I f felt kind of dumb, but everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's great. You're about to sell sham wow. And uh, I said, <laughs> okay, fine. I, I completely forgot I even had it on. Okay. Are you ready for... Yes, uh, all right, Ingrid, let me know when you're ready to yep. cut it out. All right, guys, so we'll see you next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye, guys. I'm going to end um, Instagram. Say goodbye to Instagram. Instagram. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. That was a good outro.